Welcome to All Grown Up Now, Tales of a Checkered Past. I'm Kenneth D. King, podcasting from my studio near Union Square in New York City. This podcast is an evolution of the tale, All Grown Up Now, A Friendship in Three Acts. This is season two, and it's called Tales of a Checkered Past. It's a collection of short stories from my salad days on up to the present. In each podcast, another self-contained story will be presented. These podcasts will be broadcast bi-weekly, so you get two a month. Enjoy. If you listen to the podcast All Grown Up Now, A Friendship in Three Acts, you will you heard a little bit about my early days in Oklahoma City before I moved to San Francisco. This story is from that time. I call it Eulogy for a Pair of Shoes. After college, I moved into my first apartment, which was a tiny little studio in a house behind my landlady. The ceiling was only six feet high, but the rent was really, really cheap, $100, and the landlady, Mrs. Freeman, was fabulous. My adult life had begun. In those early days, I purchased my first pair of expensive shoes. These shoes were the first and only pair of shoes I paid a week's salary for, $75, back in 1980. They were Pierre Cardin when he was still a designer. They were beautiful, rust-brown Italian leather, a modern take on a classic wingtip. This was the most beautiful pair of shoes I'd ever laid eyes on in Oklahoma City. It took me two weeks to work up the nerve to wear them, to actually put them on the ground. They were so precious to me. The first time I wore them, Mrs. Freeman accidentally drenched them when we were talking in her backyard. She was watering the roses, and she wasn't paying attention. It was their baptism. These shoes followed me since then, over 30 years, from Oklahoma City to San Francisco to New York. As the years passed... I didn't wear them a lot, as my taste in shoes had changed, but I never had the heart to get rid of them. They were the first pair of shoes I'd paid a week's salary for. I'd take them out of the box and look at them from time to time. I kept them in shoe trees, had the heels cut down when heels were lower, polished them, loved them. A few years back, I realized that, with closet space in New York being so dear, that I had to either wear them or get rid of them. Since getting rid of them wasn't going to happen, I paid a week's salary for those shoes. I decided to silver leaf them. Silver leafing gave them a new life, a New York life, such as moving to New York had given me a new life. I reinvented them as I had reinvented myself. So I wore them as really fabulous summer shoes, beloved, and carried their history with me. And then it happened. A split appeared on the side of the right shoe. The leather had separated from the sole, something my shoe man couldn't repair. It was small at first, but it grew. Then, while wearing them in Houston to meet the in-laws that first summer I was dating my husband, the split in the leather near the toe appeared. Wearing them now was more an act of charity than a fashion statement. So I decided to retire them respectfully by giving them to the bonfire during my vacation at boy camp. Now, why just not throw them away, you ask? They're an old pair of shoes, and they've worn out. And that is true. However, these shoes were always a symbol for me, a talisman of sorts. Talismans are just objects. They don't always have to be ritual objects, made with great ceremony, blessed by some holy person. It's what they represent that counts. When I purchased these shoes, I was just starting out in life. Young, stylish, good-looking, excited about the future, wanting to make my way in the world, have adventures, fall in love, do satisfying work. This is the person I was in that summer of 1980. The shoes, being such an expensive purchase, well, they were a stretch for me in that I bought something that I felt didn't belong to someone like me. 
my people didn't spend a week's salary on a pair of shoes. It's that particular moment in my life that they symbolize. That brash moment where I realized that I wanted more. More than what my people deserved. These shoes traveled with me throughout the last 33 years. Sometimes visible, sometimes dormant. They represented that part of me that has also been with me since then. I'm still that person at heart, but with the visible and invisible wear and tear of those last 32 years. Changed in appearance, but looking somewhat the same, still stylish but not unblemished like the original 1980 model. Still able to turn ahead or two, despite the scuffs on the surface. So, at camp, I turned them into a ritual object. My pretty them up as best I could, on the souls, I wrote a prayer for the future, wrote a prayer of thanks for the past, and wrote intentions for the path I wanted the shoes to blaze for me. Then I tied them together with a beautiful ribbon ready for the bonfire. I retired them with ceremony in the bonfire as a way of giving thanks to them, sending their energy into the universe where they can remain stylish forever and not end up moldering in some landfill. After how well they'd served me, after all the pleasure they'd provided, I couldn't consign them to such a bitter end. Offering them to the bonfire helped me to initiate a new phase of my life. I sensed that the new phase was coming, one where I'd look to my goals from old times, my options for the future, and the blessings that were coming into my sphere. A man I can love, a new phase reinventing myself career-wise, publishing a book. I was leaving that 1980 self behind in some ways, allowing him to go off into the universe to blaze a new path for me in the years to come. And he needs fabulous shoes. So, to the beautiful boy with the beautiful shoes, I say, you've done what you set out to do, better actually. You freed yourself from your dreary past and forged a life far better than you could have ever imagined. You wanted more, and you got it. Now, your job is to go forth wearing these fabulous shoes and help your 60-year-old self to navigate this new path that you'll be scouting out. It's a path that will reap the rewards of the work, the questioning, the sacrifices, and the risks I've taken along the way. Help me navigate this path with as much grace as possible. Also, help me to dance on this path to allow myself love and fun. And I say to the shoes, thank you for being my touchstone. There were long periods where I ignored you, but I never could forsake you by giving you away. Enjoy your trip out into the universe. Be fabulous, light my path, and dance ahead of me. The Postscript the shoes aren't entirely gone. I saved a small fragment of the leather before I gave them to the fire, and this leather lives in a locket on my charm bracelet. Thanks for listening. You can get the audiobook All Grown Up Now on iTunes, Audible, and Amazon, or from my website, allgrownupnow.com. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. If you have any questions, you can reach me through the website, allgrownupnow.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Kenneth D. King on Facebook at Kenneth D. King Design or on my main website, kennethdking.com.